So, remember, we say that there's Vesper theory and then there's molecular orbital theory. Molecular orbital theory uses these molecular orbital diagrams in order to write the electron configurations of these diatomic compounds. And we're going to say the molecular orbital diagram that we have, the one on the left and the one on the right, can be connected to a new idea, bond order. Now, first remember that the one on the left deals with H2, 2, N2. And the one on the, on the right deals with O2, F2, and Ne2. And we're going to say bond order equals half times the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Remember, the ones with stars are the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. The ones with no stars in them, those are our regular bonding molecular orbitals. Now we're going to say, based on our answers that we get from using this equation, our compound could be stable and exist, or it could be unstable and not exist. We're going to say a bond order greater than zero means that the compound is stable and exists. So once we write out the electron configuration using our molecular orbital diagrams, we would then use the bonding order formula. If the answer we get is greater than zero, that compound exists. If we get a bond order equal to zero, then that means the compound is unstable and it does not exist in reality. And we're going to say in general, the greater the bond order, the stronger the bond. This ties into single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds. So remember, let's say we had two carbons single bonded to each other. We had two carbons double bonded to each other. And we had two carbons triple bonded to each other. We would say that the bond order of the two carbons that are single bonded is one. The bond order of the double bond is two because there's two bonds. And the bond order of the triple bond is three. Triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, stronger than single bonds. Because the more bonds you put on top, the more you layer, the stronger the bond. So this has to do a little bit with bond order. We're also going to say that the stronger the bond is, the shorter the bond will be. So although the triple bond is the strongest, it's also the shortest. So you got to give up something to be that strong of a bond. We're going to say the single bond is the easiest to break, but it is the longest. And also remember that if you have a single bond, then you have one sigma bond. If you have a double bond, it's one sigma and one pi. And if you have a triple bond, it's one sigma and two pi's. You always have one sigma bond. It forms the bond that connects the elements. The pi bonds are just overlapping orbitals that protect that sigma bond protect that single bond. 